Hello everyone, welcome to Gorilla Radio Show, episode 36. Today we'll be covering... FBI, open up! God damn it, they got me. They found me. Shit! I'm not going down without a fight! Hi everyone, so glad to be back. You know, I had a great time with my new friends over in the Department of Transportation. They really opened my eyes on things. And you know what? I have to say, these train derailments are simply isolated incidents and do not reflect in any way, shape, or form on our nation's infrastructure. Episode 36 of Gorilla Radio Show. I'm Greg, and I have Dipshit and Virgil with us today. Aww. Yeah, uh, Chandran is busy being re-educated in the graduate student thesis minds right now, so, you know... You had so much time to rework that joke. <laughs> I thought I was. <laughs> Anyways... <laughs> Hi, my Stalag name is Virgil 13. Masters. I'm the co-host of Big Soy Naturals, and I would just like to take a take a moment to say that it is the official stance of Big Soy Naturals that going to grad school is only going to cause problems for you and everyone else around you. I have a lot of respect for Shandrin, but that respect is slowly being diminished as I learn that Shandrin is going to be spending several more weeks doing God knows what, uh, probably learning how to commit and get away with various war crimes as kind of going to work in a think tank. Yeah. Is Shandrin going to work at a think tank? Right after this, Shandrin is starting uh, their new job at Boeing as uh, R&D on uh, drone strikes. I've heard that no. they've got openings for non-binary people right now, so... No way. <laughs> yeah. really, the, one in the, the one in the ad they used a couple prides ago got fired or something? Mm-hmm. Well, they, yeah, they, they only let in like three or four. Uh, Absolutely crazy they'd let in anyway, because do you know where Boeing and Northrop Grumman and all those people are? Do you know where they actually build the bombs and do all the it's design work? Well, Utah. Utah. fucking 25 minutes away from me on the other side of the Salt Lake Valley. <laughs> now, Greg, you know what you have to do, right? I know what I have to do, but I'm not sure if I'm strong enough to do it. <laughs> I think it involves listeners sending maybe all three of us um, something that they can 3D print uh, and then and then yeah. put in the mail. Yeah. No, I mean, send me packages yeah, within your legal rights. You can find out my address by finding out uh, by buying merch from my store. The return address <laughs> is yeah. on the label. Yeah, you could just go to Greg's you house. You need to you get want. a PO box or something. Yeah, you it's, not, it's not. It's not my. It doesn't actually show my address. It's the address of my apartment complex, but you don't know where I live in. I'm just gonna start knocking on all of the doors. <laughs> And I'm moving soon, so I don't even know how to fix that for the business because the LLC is registered. See, to yeah, listeners, well, having a podcast is so difficult. It's like it's so one hard, of the honest. hardest things that you can do. I do at least an hour of emotional labor every week for this fucking job. Zencaster right? is kicking us off the free plan. We yeah, don't. We can't tech. use that anymore. Big tech We've... censoring. <laughs> Gorilla Radio Show for speaking out bravely against tech. grad schools, Elon Musk, <laughs> the existence of Havana Syndrome, uh, for exactly. being supporters of the only cryptocurrency that's stable, Banana Coin. Banana Coin. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, speaking of all that, though, um, before we hop into this, I do want to give a quick update on our FOIA request. Uh, the update is that nothing's happened yet. Um, apparently they don't actually need to give it to us within 20 days. I guess they just, they can take as long as they want. They can do whatever they want because they're the government. (laughs) They can do anything they want because they're the government, first of all. But uh, second of all, they can take however long they want actually getting it into their system. Once it's in their system, they have 20 days to get it back to us with an answer. 
Uh, it doesn't have to be the actual content re- we requested. They just need to give us a yes or no answer at that point, I guess. Um, so yeah, uh, update on that is maybe it'll happen, maybe it won't, but we'll see. But with that being said, why am I bringing up the FOIA request? It's because we are going to be talking about what the FOIA request was about, and that is MK Ultra and Monkey Experiments. Now, uh, if you haven't listened to episode seven, uh, first of all, you should be going back in our episode catalog and listening to every episode yes. at least every once in a while, just to make sure you stream you're every up on single the one of our. Are episodes you guys familiar? Times. Yeah, are you guys familiar with BTS? Yeah. Okay. The, the bands, yes. Yeah. Um, are you a band if you don't play instruments? Oh I yeah, so. I guess they're. I they're guess they're like, a, like a group. collection. They're like an idol group. Yeah. Right? Yeah. They're um, a group. You know, so the they their fans they listen to to BTS music on like low low volume while they're sleeping, so that like you know it doesn't disturb them while they sleep, but so that BTS gets the like streaming numbers, so that they're yeah always, like, they know if you mute it, so that doesn't count. Right, so you, so you gotta, gotta have the do volume up a little bit. Lowest yeah. volume, so you don't actually hear it, but it counts as a listen, and that's what we should all be doing with Gorilla Radio Show. Exactly. Twenty four seven, except for when you're listening to Big Sway Naturals, which is why I have two phones. Um, yeah. And I I keep keep bo- both podcasts deal? going. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm a I'm a labor organizer. <laughs> but um, yeah. So episode seven was all about specifically MK Ultra in Fort Detrick and a couple other random things. I think Greg this is started. The episode where I was a crank. Is this is this Greg? Yeah, I think crank? he started talking about aliens at the end of it. Well, I, I think, should talk about them more. Yeah, well, <laughs> exactly <laughs> one person encouraged Greg to talk about aliens more, so I guess that's just going to happen now. But um, specifically, to give a quick rundown on MK Ultra and MK Ultra and Fort Detrick. Um, it's Fort Detrick, just so you know. Detrick? Oh, shit. Detrick. Okay, Fort Detrick. <laughs> <laughs> to give a quick rundown on MK Ultra and Fort Detrick, here's a little quote that sort of gives the background to why all of this was happening. After the Korean War ended, it was revealed many American prisoners had signed statements criticizing the United States and in some cases confessing to war crimes. The CIA came up with the same explanation for both of these phenomenon, brainwashing. Communists, the CIA concluded, must have developed a drug or a technique that enabled them to control human minds. And that technique is called dialectical materialism. There we go. And it's something that they teach every week on podcasts such as Guerrilla Radio Show and maybe only one or two others. Yeah, there's no other leftist podcasts, by the way. It's it's just us, I think. Us and Big Soy Naturals. I wouldn't yeah, call myself a leftist, though. I'm I'm smarter than that. Oh, okay. I'm a different thing. <laughs> I'm a different third thing. There's a there's a third different way. Not the third way, though. That's a different. That's a different <laughs> no, no, no. no I'm, I'm not way. about not about the third way at all. I'm just We're a, doing I'm the a, Yang third way is forward. I'm a regular regular <laughs> Marxist. But you call yourself a leftist and it puts you in company with like, I think like Pete Buttigieg or something at this point. So I have (laughs) to be hostile about the lines that I draw. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. But um, yeah, MKUltra, basically the CIA saw that their uh, little war criminals that they sent to go try and destroy Korea actually ended up feeling some regret about it and even... Uh, became disillusioned with the United States as a whole hmm. after their little tour of duty. So they assumed, well, this must mean that they're br- washing brains over there. They're brainwashing. You think that, like, killing people for no reason in, like, a strange place to you, like, maybe would disillusion people without the uh, the need for brainwashing? Or do you think it's got to only be No, I think they were, I think they were like, be shooting beams right? into their okay. brain and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> So the CIA then took the initiative to develop a a counter program, which is we got to develop our own form of brainwashing. And unlike the communists, they actually started going through with brainwashing experiments. Um, By that, we mean uh, torturing people to death with, uh, well, people and animals, mostly people, uh, torturing people to death with drugs and, you know, electronics and things of that nature. 
to try to control their brain. And all we really got out of it was Charles Manson, I think. But um, <laughs> um well, we also got um, Ted. Ted Kaczynski. Oh, yeah. Ted Kaczynski was a famous uh, MK Ultra victim, I think. Allegedly. Yeah. Or, allegedly. 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 <laughs> But he was also a victim of grad school, so really, who can say yeah. what got what got to him? <laughs> That's true. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe they've sort of fused the two over time. It has a similar effect on the brain, I think. Don't worry, everybody. Chandran's under very close observation. <laughs> <laughs> Would you put Chandran in the cabin? If I, I well, I don't know if Chandran could handle it. It depends. Mm-hmm. What could we get Chandran to do? write a manifesto besides the trains people don't really like write manifestos these days unless they're like a school shooter and then it's like this is my manifesto about how i'm doing a school shooting but no one's dropping like a manifesto that's like these are my thoughts on some guys that think stuff that i don't like and i think a different thing and everyone should think just like me like where's Mm, that we are are missing that we have tweets no manifestos yeah, I guess, I guess the twit longer has replaced the manifesto. Or like our... someone's like dancing with their arms up, like like upper body only dancing while a computer voice talks about yeah, like, yeah. did you know that uh, communism yeah. is when I have stuff and you give it to me or, or something? Like, yeah, that's what we have instead of manifestos. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd like to see the first TikTok manifesto. I, think. <laughs> I feel like there's probably already been a few. Maybe. I think you guys should put out a guerrilla radio show manifesto. I'd read it. <laughs> yeah, just a book about mm-hmm. our the monkey mindset. Because <laughs> that's already a book. <laughs> oh, no one's done that yet. <laughs> so, um, to elaborate on the point I made about MK Ultra also torturing animals to death, uh, here's a little excerpt. We talked about this in episode seven. MK Ultra agents at one point flew small dogs and monkeys to an unidentified, isolated site constructed homemade wooden shelters uh like they did for ted uh for the animals and then after the animals died or were killed buried them under coatings of lime in a remote field um in addition to tests with drugs on humans some of the testing was conducted on monkeys in a laboratory at fort detrick and dietrich uh, Dietrich, i'm sorry i keep saying that this it's, it, okay. it's spelled i like to sound things out like a kindergartner i can't we don't help have it. to pronounce we don't have to pronounce europeans names correctly that's that's Austin what happens is... when you colonize your mind or decolonize exactly. your mind sorry I, my, my mind is so decolonized right now <laughs> where on where on turtle island was this base austin um i don't know actually i thought it just said an undisclosed location or i feel like last time we talked about this it was in wyoming was it? I'm not sure. I can't remember. I, I didn't put it in the little recap. But anyways, uh, they di- at this at Fort Detrick, they directed experiments that involved gassing or poisoning laboratory animals. These experiences disturbed Olson, the, I guess, director of this research program. His son, Eric, actually was quoted as saying, he'd come to work in the morning and see piles of dead monkeys. That messes with you. He wasn't the right guy for that. Um, hmm. So... The gas there is and- a right guy for that. <laughs> yeah, there is a right guy for that, and he's gra- he's graduating from the University of Chicago right now. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> definitely. The next there's definitely going to be a new University of Chicago war criminal in the next decade. I feel like if not the next year, that's what like, <laughs> yeah. that's what that school there. produces. Yeah. But um, I assume the gassing and poisoning that was killing the piles of dead monkeys that's mentioned here was with the sort of drugs that they were experimenting around with for MK Ultra, and I believe it was mostly LSD. But I don't think there's a gas form of LSD, so I'm not sure what other drugs they were using. Um, if the government answered our FOIA request, we would know, but <laughs> they didn't. So, you know, we're waiting they on that. Never will, one. folks. But yeah, that was basically a. A brief rundown of what we talked about in episode seven, and Ethan was actually on that episode with us. If uh, real heads remember Ethan, um, <laughs> y'all remember Ethan? R.I.P. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Ethan's in a better Our brother place in now. arms lost sometime in the last thirty episodes. Shout out to his family. <laughs> <laughs> so, this was January of 2022. An actual real quote from Ethan that he messaged me while we were making this episode was, 
I bet they're giving monkey Savannah syndrome somewhere right now. Uh, and then so. now, this is where we do the group enthusiasm. He was monkey bossing too high to the sun. So yeah, um, Ethan was... <laughs> I mean, I get maybe it was an obvious observation, like of course they would do this, but Ethan was completely correct. Um, earlier in March, it was revealed that the Pentagon has been funding experiments in animals try to recreate Havana syndrome in monkeys and ferrets. Uh, PETA actually wrote a letter uh, disparaging this practice lately, but, you know, as it's PETA, it was just sort of like a a light scolding and then a really weird statement uh, in the middle of it that no one really understands, and that's all. So nothing's probably going to happen to it, but... The Army! In September, awarded Wayne State University in Michigan a $750,000 grant to study the effects of radio frequency on ferrets. Quote, DOD has also recently tested pulsed radio frequency sources on primates to try and determine whether their effects can be linked to what the government calls anomalous health incidents, according to one <laughs> former intelligence official and a current U.S. official who were briefed on the effort. Despite the recent report batting down the theory that pulse radiation used by a foreign adversary is behind the ailments, note, multiple agencies admitted this shit was made up. Actual quote from the notes document. (laughs) ODNI's annual threat assessment presented to Congress last week acknowledged that for a subset of cases, the agency has not ruled out any cause, including the possibility that one or more foreign actors were involved. Yeah, so... No, no, no. Real, real quick. Okay. Um, so I'm assuming we're all in agreement here that Havana syndrome is made up bullshit, right? Well, <laughs> sometimes you need to take a personal day, and you need a reason for taking a personal day, and mm-hmm. you need something that your boss can't require you to get a doctor's note for because the illness that you've contracted is so new that you couldn't really get like properly diagnosed for it by just yeah any doctor and so you're like well based on the extreme headache nausea uh stomach ache i'm not i'm not sure what all the symptoms whatever the of, symptoms of a hangover are yeah. <laughs> i must have havana syndrome and for that reason i will not be coming into work for the next two weeks and then you um, like go on vacation, but you post all of your vacation photos to like close friends just in case any of yeah, your the, the CIA out. finsta. Yeah. <laughs> that's I think that that's like when Havana syndrome is probably real. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. It's just it's really just a consequence of drinking too much good Cuban rum. Um. <laughs> or or any you know you 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 could be drinking anything. Listeners are probably drinking something right now um, as they drive in their car. As you drive in your car. (laughs) Listening to their favorite podcast, um, having a couple beverages, and then maybe they they start to feel a little bit dizzy. Um, They can't really walk straight. They're slurring their speech. It must be the Havana syndrome. And it I, must you, can't, be, yeah. you can't operate the machinery that you you use at your job because of the Havana syndrome. That's fair. Looking at uh, the Wikipedia page for Havana syndrome, mm. it says here, uh, Havana syndrome is a cluster of idiopathic symptoms experienced mostly by U.S. By government idiots. officials and military personnel. Mm-hmm. The symptoms range in severity from pain and ringing in the ears to cognitive dysfunction. Um, I think also one of the reported symptoms was a temporary loss of hearing and a temporary loss of vision. Um, these are all like just vague enough that, you know, they could be true and they sound serious, but they're also things that are entirely self-reported and could not possibly be like physically picked up in any sort of like scan or like, I think, I think one of the other symptoms is like feeling like you've been hit by an invisible blast of energy like suddenly in your in your home and yeah, he that's, got that's, hit by like a key blast <laughs> and that's when the symptoms start coming on like um and you're like oh they the the waves they must have been coming from havana um yeah. the other thing is like 
I feel like if you work for the CIA, not that I would know personally, but my sense is that <laughs> it might be hard to take a mental health day. I bet that you can't <laughs> you can't just tell them like I'm having mental health and call out. Um, yeah. You could be like, oh, I'm having anxiety today. Like, it's going to be difficult for me to make phone calls. I don't know if they make phone calls in the CIA, but whatever it is that <laughs> it's they gonna do. It's going to be difficult for me to listen in on wiretaps today. <laughs> yeah. And so um, you got to come up with other things. Like, I bet the CIA is totally down for you to be like, I think I'm getting radio waves sent to me from Cuba, but you can't be like, I'm feeling really depressed. Yeah. yeah. So uh, basically, despite... The recent intelligence report from the CIA, uh, right? I don't know if it was from the CIA specifically. Like, I don't remember if there's like a bit of a disagreeance here, but um, basically they came out and admitted, yeah, there's no real basis for this. However, um, and uh, I believe the Intel chief Avril Haines, that she actually concurs with the intelligence community's overall assessment that it is in fact fake but Mm -hmm. noted that the government continues to fund this year-long study, uh, which is funded from September 30th of last year to September 29th of this year. They are continuing this research on the science and technology side to determine causation. Uh, Essentially, they're trying to recreate it. Have you guys heard of manifestation? I have. have. I'm familiar. Maybe for the radio heads who aren't paying attention to angel numbers yet, um, manifestation is, you know, when you, like, think something so hard that, like, the universe provides it to you as a result of your good vibes and positive energy. And I think that maybe the CIA might be engaging in um, organizational level manifestation where they would really like for Havana syndrome to be real. So <laughs> they're, they're, they're letting the universe provide it for them by giving monkeys symptoms um, that then they can say is, is the syndrome. <laughs> so I believe that because it's funded until September 29th of this year, I don't think they've come out with any conclusive results yet, but I believe uh, that's also partially due to the fact that they haven't found anything to report on yet. Be- beyond what's already known about microwaves can like cause some slight discomfort and like maybe cancer over time or something, but they haven't really been able to recreate any of the symptoms. Considering, I don't know, I feel like this time... Like here's here's my thing. Um, there's some parallels between MK Ultra and Havana Syndrome. Obviously, both of them started out with animal testing, but after the Korean War, deserved criticism was written off as secret communist brainwashing techniques, and then that was used as an excuse to develop actual brainwashing techniques. Now I think that uh, you know CIA handlers and you know military guys getting a bit of a tummy ache. It's being blamed on evil, like, invisible heart attack guns, or the tummy ache gun, I suppose. And because they can't actually prove that, I think in both cases, they know it's bullshit. But in both cases, they brought it into public discourse, you know, spread it among journalists to create fear about it, in order to have an excuse to actually try developing those technologies. That's that's my my take on it. I don't know what you think. (laughs) I feel like sometimes and i'm not i'm not accusing the united states of creating mass harm events in order to justify taking action against uh other other states that we are antagonistic towards but sometimes like when we already have a for a foreign enemy and we really want to do a war on them but we need maybe to like drum up some public support for that it would be really beneficial if we could point to some sort of existential threat that that state is causing that we need to put a stop to and i think that there is a vested interest in havana syndrome being real because that would justify taking further action against Cuba 
than we currently do. Yeah, like I feel it's uh, important to note here that obviously the U.S. has been incredibly antagonistic towards Cuba its entire existence as a like non-colony, non-dictatorship. But, you know, it's it's been steadily ramping up the intensity of the economic sanctions we're putting down on them, right. uh, especially after the Soviet Union collapsed. And they can... I, Greg, you may know more about this. I feel like China doesn't like give as much economic aid to Cuba, or not nearly as much as the Soviet Union used to do. Not at all. No. Nowhere yeah, near not as at much. All, right? They don't really give them economic aid at all. Yeah, I figured. Like... Not very much at all. Like, they're still driving around cars from the 1950s, and they have some Chinese cars because they can buy from them, but I feel like China also isn't, like, necessarily known for its automotive industry, so... Well, and the, you know, the collapse yeah. of the Soviet Union also is why the United States would need something like Havana Syndrome being real to justify taking any kind of action against Cuba, because when the Soviet Union was kicking and Cuba and the Soviet Union were allies, then, like, the reason for um, taking military action or failing to assassinate Castro or something, like, what, 600 times? Something um, like that, yeah. Something was like because, like, oh, they're, you know, an ally of our our enemy, um, and it and they are so close to the United States, we need to do something about it. But I feel like the political climate in the United States while it is like crazy is generally pretty anti-war across the political spectrum and the and the reasons for that might be different but i i feel like there's not a lot of interest in going to war or engaging in in a foreign conflict um really from anyone besides like the kinds of liberals who seem to only exist on the internet and so (laughs) i think cuba has to like actively be doing something that the general public can agree is scary um yeah to justify any kind of increased action against cuba and get the support of people to do that yeah i will say i think definitely you're right about like we don't have an excuse really to do like direct intervention or anything I feel like, though, the background pressure has increased steadily ever since the collapse of the Soviet Union. Like, as in, I mean, they have, like, an army of, like, fake Cubans on Twitter. Well, uh, I, well I say that, no, but, they're, like... They're, uh, they're white Cubans. They're, like, you know, Cuban plantation owners is what they are. Yeah, we love the Miami Cubans. There, There is a uh, subset of Twitter accounts that are just, like, literally fake and designed to like try to rile up discontent about Cuba. Um, And also the economic sanctions, I think the ones that Trump implemented were the harshest ever implement, like in the history of our sanctions against them. But I'm not certain of that. It may have just been that he, Oh, they were. Okay. The interesting thing is you would think Biden would be happy to go back to the Obama era regulations which were a lot less strict and he actually started normalizing relationships again but uh he actually hasn't touched the trump sanctions on cuba That's at all shocking. yeah Who no, thought the, the cold warrior would not want to back down on cuba yeah no so it's uh it's still the pressure is still like bearing down on them really bad and of course there was just recently that cuba america baseball game where all the miami cubans started like throwing shit at the cuban team and the cuban delegates Losers. fucking gusanos <laughs> i i think so that there is a significant difference in the like mind of the average american um between sanctions and taking any kind of military action even though the obviously like the impacts of sanctions are going to be felt really severely by the people in the countries where that's happening to i think that like the justification for sanctions is is almost not needed um because it's not something that people will pay attention to and i think that like the average person who isn't politically aware doesn't see that as as uh, harsh of an action as it as it actually is, but like 
doing some kind of like armed conflict or military action or drone strike or trying to assassinate someone like I think that does require a bit more laying the groundwork of of propaganda and the um committee to investigate Havana syndrome like in the senate that's led by Marco Rubio but then like Biden just appointed someone I think last year to investigate it so it's like clearly an effort not like you know it's it's one of those times where everyone's working together to accomplish um a shared goal and I I think that like we can just see the groundwork being laid for a reason why we need to be harsher on Cuba besides just I guess like communist bad but it's like oh they're they're giving every American a, a, a tummy ache. Yeah. They're hitting them with the invisible <laughs> blast of energy. It's interesting though cuz it's definitely not only Cuba that they're doing this to. I believe they did it in Vietnam and to China as well. Like suspiciously, it's only the communist countries that are doing this, not any of our other enemies. But um, yeah, I believe Kamala Harris claimed to have gotten Havana okay, syndrome so in Vietnam. This is the one thing that makes me think that maybe Havana syndrome is real. Because <laughs> okay. have you heard? Have you heard her talk recently? Uh, I try not to. <laughs> she, she, yeah, she might actually. Yeah. I think she's she's either on a fascinating cocktail of drugs, or she's had Havana syndrome, or like they replaced her with a woman that looks exactly like her, but like has fifteen percent of her like cognitive abilities. <laughs> because I feel like she used to be able to speak in full sentences. She's on the greatest cocktail of benzos ever created. She's on the opposite of whatever drugs they're giving Joe Biden. Yeah. Oh, Joe's the reason is an Adderall shortage. He is fucking awful. (laughs) (laughs) That's why Joe passed that thing about uh, you can't do telehealth Adderall anymore because he wants it all for himself. Mm. (laughs) Wait a minute. I'm sorry. Was that the way that he addressed the fact that there are just no Adderall pills? Uh, no, that is a part of why there's no Adderall pills. They're um, increasing the like restrictions on um, like how it is that you can get them, and also like there's restrictions on how much Adderall. Uh, or not Adderall, but the like the active ingredient in all of the like ADHD medication can be produced in a year, and nice. that quota doesn't change regardless of how many people are prescribed to take it. Um, and of course there was like an increase of people that were diagnosed with ADHD or were, or were prescribed like Adderall or other ADHD medications in the past couple of years. And so now we're like at this peak of all these people are trying to get their medication, but there's only so much being made. The Adderall yeah. shortage is beating my ass. It is, <laughs> I'm not having a good time. I I've added Joe Biden several times on Twitter and on Instagram <laughs> and I've said, please, please fix this. Oh, uh, but he has not listened to my pleas. As as always, he's he's very passive. He doesn't he doesn't respond to the in, the important people in America. But no. I, I think that Kamala Harris might have had it, and this makes me wonder. Austin, do you have a list somewhere of maybe notable people who have claimed to have Havana syndrome? Um, I don't. I can I can look really quick, but I will say really quickly. It is very interesting that Kamala Harris claimed to get uh, Havana Syndrome in Vietnam, specifically because I learned about this recently. Uh, Vietnam, like the general public, loves America. Like, I do not know why. Because they beat our fucking asses, dude. Yeah, but like... I. But, like, they don't gotta, like, love us just because they beat the hell out of us. The entire time that Vietnam was fighting the United States... They they were a lot like the Cubans who don't hate us. We're very much aware they were fighting the government. Yeah. Well, it's just that it's interesting because Vietnamese people were polled higher than Israel for favorability of America. I think it's something like 84% had a favorable opinion of America, which is, it seems insane to me. They probably think we're like cartoon people. That's been my experience when I go to some some other countries where, um, like, a lot of my family in South Africa 
they are always trying to get me to bring them cowboy boots when I come visit. <laughs> when they're like they're, a TV show. Yeah, because they're like, oh yeah, I need some, I need some American shoes, and I'm like, what, do, what do you mean? And they're like, you know, I would like. I'd like some cowboy boots, like what you probably wear every day. Every day. Uh, <laughs> and That's awesome. they, they do seem to think that like we're we're just like a cartoon person country. So I bet yeah. that, that that's probably how the people of Vietnam think of us too. They might like my family also thinks that I eat McDonald's made in a microwave for every meal. Um, <laughs> they're awesome. like they're like well, cause they're, cause I think more Americans have microwaves in their homes and it's not as common, I guess, in, mm, in other places. None okay. of my family in South Africa have one. So they think it's like one of the cool American appliances that everyone has. And then what's the most common American restaurant? McDonald's. So they're like, you know, you, you, you put your McDonald's in the microwave and then you put I mean, your both of these things are up. true individually. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I also never really considered the fact that, like, the cheapest appliance you could buy is a microwave. Is not everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's like well, actually air a toaster is cheaper. Where like a lot That's of people just don't have air conditioners in their homes in other places because it's just not as not normal to do. Um, yeah. But you know how there's like. There's there's weeaboos, for, which are yeah. people who yeah, really yeah. love Japan, but in a way that's like cartoon. Unhealthy. Well, yeah. yeah, and and gross. I think that there's something like that also for people who really like America. That's a thing where it's like they don't love like America, but they they love like how they think of us as a cartoon. I will mm. say there is a there is a guy in um, I think Harajuku, Japan. Ooh. Who just goes down the street every day dressed in like a big like cowboy hat, cowboy boots, American flag t shirt, big belt buckle, and yeah, no, I I think those people definitely do exist. They're not as common, I wouldn't think, but yeah. <laughs> that is really funny to think about. Also, like they think of American humor as as being like like Three Stooges stuff. Yeah. Uh- <laughs> I always wondered if Family Guy was, if it ever caught on anywhere else. Well, you have like a pretty uh, diverse global base of listeners, right? But they're um, probably like super online. Yeah, online. 17 to 23 year old trans kids. No, I <laughs> meant like, wide. I meant countries, not, not, ide- well, not genders, <laughs> but yeah, they, but I, know, I, I don't they remember can share what, what American stereotypes they have. Um, yeah, you have too many English people for my liking. You know <laughs> who you say, are. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, we'll get back on topic after this, I promise. But um, there is a there is a Chinese uh, student in my lab, and his family always asks him, "Can you bring back some memorabilia from America? Like, can you bring back some cool American stuff?" And he, like, no shit, told them, "What do you want me to do? Bring back a cigarette?" And it was the funniest fucking thing I've ever heard because it's like anyone uh, who actually spends time here just hates it. <laughs> who was it that said that we have no, like, we have no icons? We just have SpongeBob and Spider Man. <laughs> it was. It was. Uh, Those are our icons. It was someone in Iran after we blew up Soleimani. I think. Uh, I don't remember who it was though. It was, you know, true. <laughs> All of no, our icons true. are war criminals. But yeah, um, I, I don't believe Kamala Harris just because I don't think they would have any reason to do that to Kamala what Harris. To believing women. I don't know how, we, where, how are we getting back to Kamala? What, what, what you don't believe they would do what to Kamala? Give her Havana to syndrome. Give her Havana syndrome. Yeah, they were they were say, she's saying that basically they're frying her brain with microwave beams. Uh, but you know what won't fry your brain? The only sponsor on our podcast that Wait, will accept this is my because, bit. It's, because it's got <laughs> monkey in the name, Monkey Colt Coffee. Go to monkeycoltcoffee.com. Uh, it's it oh. discount code Travis. Monkeycoltcoffee.com, everyone. Use code <laughs> Travis for 10% off. Again, that is code Travis. Just like the chimp that ripped that lady's face off. You know where to find it. Ooh, if we're doing ads, um, do can, I, ad? can I do an ad? Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, as you might know, 
I'm the co-host of Big Soy Naturals, and uh, m more recently, we've you know we're getting we're getting up there. We have we have listeners, we have commercials, we have sponsors, and um, Big Soy Naturals is now made possible by our sponsor, the novel Infinite Jest by David Foster Wallace. <laughs> Infinite so Jest is a heartwarming and hilarious tale about being in the thrall of visual media, but more importantly, it's about the friends we make along the way. Infinite Jest um, makes us think about how our desire for entertainment content dominates our lives, and it's a rip-roaring read that can be enjoyed by yourself or with a group of friends. This year has only just started, but many critics are already calling Infinite Jest the best book of 2023. Uh, find out what what makes me say it's really good. Um, you can purchase copies as many as you want of Infinite Jest at your local bookstore or online at www.bigsoynaturals.church. All right. That was my the ad. reason I did the ad read was because I got exactly one anonymous message saying you should tell greg to do the ad reads better or have someone else do it Aww. you didn't even tell me to do them better you just did it <laughs> that's so me i think that you were doing them great but yeah, i think greg was doing fine so i wanted to prove that i cannot do them any better <laughs> you did you did a good job yeah uh, but yeah you nailed it i have to buy so. some coffee too i'll do that yeah. Yeah. You know what else nails it, everybody? <laughs> I actually, I, I, I promise we'll get back on track after this, but I actually bought some for my work and like started putting it in the cabinets in like random break rooms to see if I could get people hooked. Uh -huh. And I'm not sure if it's working. Why don't you um, tell everybody what happened when you tried to brew a pot of it the first time? No, that's for the blackmail tier. <laughs> no, no, this, this, you need to let it out. Well, I, I didn't know how much coffee you needed to use, so I just made, like, I made coffee LaCroix, basically. It was mostly Austin water. put a teaspoon of coffee grounds <laughs> in a, in a like, restaurant-sized brewing machine. Oh. Like, with a fucking coffee filter the size of a dinner plate, he put coffee grounds in the <laughs> like, middle I of it. Like, I didn't know? And then okay. filled it up the normal amount with water and brewed that and then went into the chat and said, why is the coffee bad? I didn't say it's bad. I was asking why, like, what did I do wrong? Because I knew it was wrong. Had you not made coffee before? No. How old not, I don't like... understand. You you would die without Kim, wouldn't you? <laughs> a baby. I think that Austin might be doing weaponized incompetence. I think so. I think it's. I think it's on purpose. I see. I've been. I've been accused of this, but I swear to God, like it's not on purpose. I'm Austin, I swear to God, I'm I, just incompetent. Austin, I I need to put more of your business on blast because I distinctly remember you sleeping on a damp bed, and if we're talking about weaponized incompetence that that might be the most egregious example that, that i can think of I am i remember remembering this, this correctly what the fuck are you talking about I, did you I, sleep on a damp bed i think the dryer didn't dry it enough and i figured it was probably good enough so i just like put it on there instead of putting person? it back in the dryer are you a real fucking person i didn't i was tired and i wanted to take a nap you slept on a damp bed <laughs> So I had to, I had to take the, I had to bite the bullet. Like a bat in how, a cave. How have you not died of like a dis, like scarlet fever or something? Like how, <laughs> Austin's gonna get dysentery. So, um, but yeah, speaking about microwaving people's brains, mm. I actually did go through the CIA FOIA request archives, oh. trying to find anything I could about monkeys, Havana syndrome, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I found a couple of things that were actually very interesting that I really want to talk about. So um, here, I guess we can just uh, take turns reading paragraphs from this article that the CIA, uh, I'm not sure why they had it in their FOIA request. Maybe they had something to do with publishing it. But um, anyways, so <clears throat> they speculated that the Russians were trying to drive American diplomats stir crazy with the waves. This is from 1972, by the way. Um, Neither the CIA nor the State Department had the facilities to test the effects of the silent rays on human beings, though. At the Pentagon, however, the super-secret Advanced Research Project had worked on electronic sensors and other weird projects. The agency quietly began a study under the name 
under sorry under the direction of Richard Cesaro into the effects of microwaves on people. Cesaro gave the project the code name Operation Pandora and called in a physician, Do- Dr. Herb Pollock, and two crack military scientists, Dr. Joseph Sharp of Walter Reed Army Hospital and engineer microwave expert Mark Grove of the Air Force. Some felt there were signs of aberrant behavior caused by the microwaves, but the majority disagreed. Only the rabbits showed clear changes in their heart rate, which Zared attributed to heat from the rays. The dis- disagreement on psychological changes were sent to a top secret reviewing board, which could also reach no absolute conclusion that the rays affected the monkeys' minds. Nevertheless, the suspicion lingered, and the White House decided that even if the microwaves were not brainwashing embassy people, they should be halted. The fantastic details are contained in a file marked Operation Pandora, which describes how the Russians bombarded our embassy staff with eerie low-radiation impulses. Their secret intent, it was suspected, may have been to alter the personalities of our diplomats. At the June 1967 Glassboro meeting between President Lyndon Johnson and Soviet Premier Alexei Kosygin, the Kosygin? the the question of the microwave where it raised came up. One informant insists Johnson personally asked Kosygin to end the raid bombardment, although other sources say the request was made at a lower level. By 1968, most of Cesaro's scientists were convinced that the microwaves were not psychologically harmful, and the embassy exper- experiments ended in early 1969. The brilliant work done by the team, however, has now led to important research on the effects of microwaves. So far, tests show high radiation can injure eyes, genital organs, and perhaps other parts of the body. But as yet, there is no conclusive proof that low-level radiation is harmful. So yeah, basically what this was is a uh, embassy in... Uh, I forgot where the embassy was, <laughs> but um, there was a, there was a Soviet... No, no, no. This was an embassy... Uh, I think a U.S. embassy to the Soviet Union. The the Soviet Union sent some sort of like commemorative pin or something to hang on their wall, and it was found to be emitting a low level of microwaves. <laughs> I guess, uh, and nobody really knows for sure why they did it, but allegedly they discovered that this that this gift was actually nefarious in intent, and said that it was emanating these rays. And they assumed that it was to uh, change the minds and personalities of American diplomats. So this is sort of a blending of the modern Havana syndrome and the good old-fashioned communist mind-washing techniques. You can't really verify these claims, and I honestly don't believe that the Soviets actually put like a device that (laughs) emanated rays in the U.S. Embassy. Um, if anything, it was probably a listening device because they wanted to spy on them. <laughs> but um, or maybe they did it just to to mess with us. They knew that we yeah. were gonna we were gonna notice the rays, and they were like, "I'm gonna, I'm playing 4D chess." They knew Americans were fucking insane and neurotic yeah, about everything. That's actually a that's a really funny possibility. Is they're like, "Look, we know the Americans are insane. Wouldn't it drive them nuts?" <laughs> Like it's sort of like Sputnik, where they sent it up into space, and it had it was uh, it was just pulsing, right? Sending like radio frequencies, not even anything that could possibly be malicious. But the Americans immediately jumped to the conclusion that it was sending like real time coordinates of like every person in America to the Soviet Union, and that they were going to like launch a missile strike from space. Um, yeah, but of course, that was true. We're a conspiracy prone people. That is true. Comes with the Protestants. Mm. Um, I um, meant to share this with the two of you before we started, but when I, when you invited me to be on this episode, and I was doing some research on the the primates getting Havana syndrome, I found uh, a Business Insider article from 2021 that shared that the um, like the government had announced their intentions to start testing on primates to figure out if, if they could give them Havana syndrome. Um, Mm, So this had been like openly planned and shared for a while. 
Yeah, and I guess I just didn't hear about it because it hadn't actually started until yeah, just recently. Yeah, I, I hadn't heard about it until, like, we were talking about it earlier, but it, it seems like this information has been out there for a little while, um, but it's now that I guess it is happening and people are reporting on it is, is um, when people are beginning to, to get upset about it, but it just seems incredibly manufactured. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's there's some sort of fascination in the American mind with like s- shooting beams that cause an effect on you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like it's it's a very persistent myth throughout our history and Everyone this seems to be proof of that. Had the fantasy of getting those goggles that let you see through women's clothes. And yeah. when they found out that they couldn't do that, then they decided to join the scientific branch of the military um, so that they could be the, the guy to create it. Yeah, they wanted to, to make it real. Which, honestly, this all of these things feel like just an exercise in imagining something to get scared about or imagining something to get horny about in that case and like working very hard to try to make it real. It's like Twitter inventing a type of guy. Yeah, it's, it's the exact opposite of how scientific progress is usually supposed to happen in that they're just like... Making up a scenario. You're not, to well, you're not supposed to start at the end point of your yeah. conclusion. Like that Havana syndrome is real and then reverse engineering ways to make that statement true by yeah. killing I don't know how many monkeys Countless. and giving them diseases and frying Kamala Harris's brain um, <laughs> in order to make a, a claim that we, we get to go to war with Cuba. Yeah. Another interesting CIA document was from 1948. It's It doesn't contain very much interesting information, just that the CIA was monitoring a freight shipment of monkeys to the USSR for an unknown reason, and they had a guy like go in and watch the health of the monkeys, and uh, there's a huge redaction... And it says all the monkeys ended up dying. So um, I'm not going to draw any conclusions there, but like the redactions, like they get the gears spinning, you know, maybe they sent a guy in there to take out the monkeys for some reason. Maybe they didn't want the USSR doing monkey based research, but realistically it was probably something pretty mundane, but um, I don't know. just thought I'd throw that one in there, (laughs) but this last one. This last one is fucking insane. Greg, I don't know how familiar you are with it. I, I did tweet about this. I did a tweet. Um, but if you want to go ahead and read this first paragraph and then... Are you familiar with Austin's tweets? <laughs> <laughs> are you familiar with my tweets, Greg? I do have your tweet notifications on, but I don't normally read them. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> Another... <laughs> Another fascinating military animal project is described in a United States Air Force film that was declassified in 2012. Identified as Paisley Pink Task 1. Print. The 19... print. Oh, well, we're close enough. The 1972 <laughs> film depicts a project to train rhesus monkeys to follow a remote, to follow remote det- uh, direction to penetrate enemy territory for reconnaissance and sabotage purposes. The project was carried out by the Environmental Medicine and Human Engineering Divisions of the 6,570th Aerospace Medical Research... i got to call it. You got it. <laughs> I had to call you it so this, bad Greg. that entire sentence. I'm hitting six, Greg with Havana Syndrome. Of the 6,570th Aerospace Medical Research Laboratory at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Ohio. Yeah. So, um... You'll notice there's a YouTube link down there. Uh, that's because the National Archive declassified this and made this uh, the evidence that this project was underway public to all. The title of the YouTube video is just called Paisley Print Task 1. Um, it's only got, it's got less than 2,000 views on YouTube. Um, but essentially, the film describes the training given to the monkey and demonstrates an electrode vest that is remotely controlled by an operator to correct the monkey Wait. if it strays off the desired course. Am I understanding this correctly? They were, like, puppeting the monkeys via vest to, so, to carry explosives? 
Yeah, so they were yeah. trying to. It evident. I think there's a couple of reasons that this could have failed that we can get into, but essentially they strapped them with a vest that had a radio receiver on it, and it had electrodes that I guess were supposed to give them a zap on either the left or the right if they wanted them to like go in that particular direction. Um, That's so neat. <laughs> but um, essentially the idea was that the monkey would be carrying an explosive payload and the monkey could covertly sneak behind enemy lines or under a Soviet tank, perhaps, which well, the video you can't shows. Get a monkey to covertly do anything. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the video actually shows footage of a Soviet tank exploding after the monkey reaches its destination. Uh, the destination in the video is obviously just like a monkey going to like a little marker in a field. They didn't actually blow up the monkey, but that begs the question. Did they actually think the monkey would be able to arm the bomb? Or, more realistically, were they trading fucking suicide bomber monkey squads in the Cold War to literally kill themselves in front of the Soviets? That's so fucked up. (laughs) It's, like, it's fucked up, but it's so incredible to just think about, like, a monkey running into, like, a Soviet airbase and just blowing himself up with a fucking bomb strapped to his head. It doesn't make you laugh. It's... uh, What the fuck? Yeah, no, so... This is real. Like, for the record, this is completely real. I just watched the footage. Yeah, you're watching the footage? Anybody can watch this footage. I'm not gonna watch the footage. I I believe you. I don't want it's to actually see a bunch suicide of cute, bomber It's monkey. actually a bunch of cute monkeys with little stuff. Yeah, they don't blow up any monkeys them. in the footage. This is the proof of concept that they basically gave, like, the U.S. government gave them money to develop animal-based military weapons, and this is sort of the demo video that they gave back. And they ended up not going through with the project and sticking to dolphins instead, which, by the way... Dolphins? La- yeah, last episode we actually talked about this, uh... Mina in our question bucket channel asked, do you think the military could train monkeys to use bombs like they did dolphins in the Cold War? And uh, it turns out the answer is oh, yes. Buddy. The, oh, buddy. The Everybody we was training dolphins. dolphins. <laughs> I think this the dolphins sucks. worked better because they have more like bloodlust than a little capuchin monkey. <laughs> but um... <laughs> You know what this is? This is like when gangs get like a little kid to shoot someone. Yeah. It is kind of like that, yeah. It's so it's this is so fucked up. I'm upset. This is the worst thing I've learned today. Yeah. But um I'm thinking that because <laughs> as someone who's worked with trying to train monkeys, I know how hard it is to train monkeys to do anything like willingly. The uh, I think the idea is what I'm assuming happened here is that the researchers quickly realized that it took months just to train them to like get to a place where they would like voluntarily leave the cage, put on a collar and like put on the vest or whatever. So I think they realized the investment would be way too steep to just be blowing these little fuckers up. up. Cause they couldn't train them to plant the bomb and then like leave like fucking James Bond. If it had worked. Do you (laughs) think that the CIA would have supplied the capuchin monkeys to the Mujahid in Afghanistan? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I, th- I, I think they would have monkeys doing 9-11 <laughs> oh no I don't know it's just it's incredible like I wasn't even looking for this for the record like Mina when you asked that question I, I forgot I, I said last episode that I was going to look into it I completely forgot but in the process of looking for military experiments on monkeys I just found this uh, National Archives video that is just about how they literally did strap bombs to monkeys. I'd like to, I don't know, it's just, the Cold War was such an insane time for the American government and the populace. Just absolute fucking crazy people. I don't know if we're more or less insane now, (laughs) because, I mean, we are still... More, by a lot. It feels like maybe we're running out of content here like they're they're playing (laughs) reruns with the havana syndrome shit (laughs) yeah i i will say that like in terms of manufactured outrage incidents 9-11 that that like ranks pretty high you know i'm not that i'm not that i'm claiming that it's a manufactured outrage but if it it was (laughs) if it was 
It's like, that's a pretty good one. <laughs> Kamala Harris getting a tummy ache. It does not really inspire me to like enlist in the military or support a war. I feel like every every CIA official could get a tummy ache. Like Havana syndrome could be real even. And that would not, uh, I think, push me or many other people into feeling like, oh, yeah, we got to do something about those you know, two things. I just, I feel like that it's a low effort uh, in terms yeah. of getting, getting us real mad and patriotic. Um, the, they should uh, go back to the drawing board and come up with, well, no, they shouldn't. Yeah, maybe, no, yeah, no. Let him keep doing this one. The security state has just been playing the hits for like the last half a decade. Yeah, Yeah, they didn't do a great job with the with the Ukraine thing. They kind of dropped that one. They could have done better on that COVID. They could have gotten World War Three out of COVID. Well, they're they're kind they they could have done something with COVID to make everyone upset with China, and they they sort of started, and then they. It yeah, devolved it feels like, into like a culture war about masks. Um, it feels like there's some reluctance that's like at at some points they're just going full mask off. Like we don't care if you think this is true or not. This is what we're using as justification. But other times it feels like they're like trying really hard to make something believable. And then like half the people in the government go through with it and half the other ones are like, I don't believe this. So it's like I I wonder how hard it's, they're even like trying anymore. Well, like, I think when it comes to the China game plan specifically, here? <laughs> when it comes to China specifically, I think it's just the first time in a very very long time where the government is actually scared of an adversary. Yeah. That they is could just be trying rival. to do like a maybe it's just like a gradual like inoculating the american public to hearing propaganda about china thing because i think fucking, just fucking do it just pull the fucking trigger i what what, what? it's either i think that they recognize that in the years? information age americans are a lot more skeptical sometimes <laughs> like so at least say oh go ahead sorry oh no, no no i was gonna say like at least half of americans i'd say are more skeptical than they were back in like the 1950s but that could be that could be wrong so, um, when, like, President Barack, The Rock, Hussein, <laughs> Obama, um, was starting to, like, loosen our diplomatic relationship with Cuba, like, there was, you know, like, polling across the United States to see how people felt about it, and I just looked to make sure that I was right, but, um, in 2016, um, like, 75% of Americans polled by Pew um, claimed that they were, like, happy to see, like, relations with Cuba be improved. And I, like, I, I think that there is, um, the, like, the existential threat that an ally of the Soviet Union, like, created for people, when that disappeared, there was, like, really no reason in most people's minds unless you live in Miami um <laughs> to you know have this like incredibly adversarial relationship with Cuba like it it probably just feels random to most people um yeah and I think now that China is um really taking the place of what the Soviet Union once was in terms of like looming threat in the imagination of uh american government officials um that cuba like can kind of begin to fill that role again um yeah and i think that in the same way that the united states was like fearful to ever take the soviet union on directly because they knew that we were we would get cooked but instead would, like, engage in proxy warfare with, like, other states that, you know, it believed were more likely to to win or would just, like, assassinate the leaders of those places. The same playbook is, like, absolutely getting played out now. I mean, that's sort of what's happening in Ukraine. It's definitely, like, the reason that Biden has not, like, improved relations with Cuba um, after Trump 
Um, it's definitely the reason for like our increased hostility to Iran. Yeah. Which, think... by the way, for everybody listening at home, <clears throat> place your bets now. We're recording this on March 24th. Aww. Will we be launching missile strikes on Tehran by the time this no, episode comes no, no. out? They just, they just had a new year. Over the, last, not... over the last 48 hours. Let's put positive an energy towards the people of Iran. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Let, me, let's manifest. The of the Ayatollah every day. Let's do our own Havana Syndrome. But when were we send nice vibes to the enemies of the United States? Yeah, we send like the we send like the Tums wave to people instead of the tummy ache wave. <laughs> I do think though there's two things that maybe are happening with the American public that are causing some hesitancy on the side of uh, like the propaganda machine, I guess. I think one thing is that pulling across the nation shows that Maybe this is too optimistic, but like Americans aren't as reactionary as a mass of people, like as just the average guy, as many people assume, or at least as a politicians and political science people would assume, I guess. And I think that maybe the lack of Cold War education uh, in, in that we don't tell people about the crimes we've committed over the Cold War has backfired a little bit because there's not really like a... There's not really, like, a big threat in the American mind. Like, it's sort of China, but we can't really bring ourselves to commit to it. And so it's not as easy to whip up, like, nationalist fervor anymore. And so going fully into the propaganda stuff might be bad polling or re-election or something. So, I don't know. That's my optimistic take. This could just be because I'm talking about this a lot on Big Soy Naturals right now, but... It makes me think about how in the, like, immediate aftermath of the Cold War, the war machine of guys, they were all kind of scrambling because somehow, like, the military budget had actually been cut. Um, military mm-hmm. enrollment was way down, and the average um, American, when asked, was confidently saying that they thought that there were going to be no more wars. Um, because in their mind, like the, you know, the major antagonist that they had lived with their entire lives and maybe like the lives of their parents, like was now gone. And so they couldn't see any reason why there would be another war. And so there was like no incentive for a lot of people to, to join the military, um, or to like support in an, in an increase to, um, the military's budget. And so all of the people whose job it is to make sure that the war machine is like running smoothly forever, um, we're like, oh shit, what's, what are we going to do? We're out of, we're out of justification for war. And it wasn't too long after that, that 9-11 happened, which was sort of like telegraphed by some neoconservative theorists who were saying that the reason people are wrong for saying that there's going to be no more wars is that the next war is going to be fought over, like, religion, like, religious differences. They were like, wars used to be fought over resources, then they were fought over ideas, like communism versus capitalism. And now that the world is becoming increasingly global, it's going to be fought over um, religious differences that are brought out, or, like, cultural differences that are brought out, like, through that globalization yeah. and then something happened that that proved them right and then everyone felt ready to join join the military again and, and in, increase the budget and it feels like we're kind of in a similar period to that like lead up of like I think the average person just doesn't see a reason why when you know there's headlines about like the military budget being massive and getting increased every year they're like but what, like, what's the justification for this? Um, people want to be out of Iraq and Afghanistan. The war on terror is not really, not resonating with people anymore. Yeah. So it just feels like a, like a looking for the next thing to, to justify keeping everything going. And yeah, this, I mean, Don't Havana worry, syndrome folks, is not. Find a fucking way. Yeah, Havana syndrome doesn't really inspire fear or awe into my heart but maybe this is just um 
part one of something. Yeah, I I definitely think this is part of the this is part of like the feeling out phase. Like they're looking for something that they could really rally around. Well, they got a gift put on their fucking laps with Ukraine, so. Yeah. Yeah, and I think history is definitely repeating in terms of like the concept of brain altering waves and then testing those on monkeys. But in a broader sense, history is repeating in that these things surface when we need a justification for war. And it just so happens that monkeys and eventually, I'm sure, um, unwilling research participants are going to be the victims of this search for a problem. Yeah. And yeah, with who that... Who said that history <laughs> repeats itself first as tragedy, then as farce? Then we'll let our, our mutual boy Karl Marx... I thought that yeah, was Shakespeare. Because I feel of the like pod, if... Karl Marx. <laughs> uh, if 9-11 is a tragedy, giving Kamala Harris a tummy ache, that's a farce. <laughs> that's for sure a farce. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but anyways, with that being said, with all Subscribe this talk... Subscribe to our Patreon. Well, yeah. Well, first of all, subscribe to our Patreon, please. We True. need money. <laughs> and also subscribe to Big Soy Naturals Patreon. Yeah. But um. But with a different five dollars. Yeah, a different five dollars. <laughs> An additional five dollars, everyone. I know you have ten dollars. <laughs> but um, I guess part of the reason we're talking about empire and imperialism and anti-communism this episode is we're sort of preparing you for next month. We are going hard into our Congo series, which is all going to be all about the Congo. Well, yeah, the Congo, the history of the Congo, the decolonization efforts of the Congo and conservation in the Congo. You guys are not ready for the amount of research I've done for this, folks. Oh, yeah. No, it's been a lot of reading. I'm Uh, very excited. Chandran is reading like the entire Poisonwood Bible book. It's the reason why monkeys are so adjacent to these stories that we're telling on our podcast lately is because that's sort of the role that monkeys just play in society. They're very prevalent in almost every aspect of our society if you're looking for it, which is why our podcast never runs out of things to talk about. But the issues that affect primates are adjacent to issues that affect us all. And so uh, we're very excited to start this series. But with that, the last thing we're going to plug is, uh, I guess, should we, should we plug Joan's GoFundMe to get her out of the Bay Area? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Philadelphia, the greatest city in the world. <laughs> number one city in the United States. Number one city in the entire world. Um, also the, is the only place worth living in. Some places <laughs> that are bad to live in include maybe Utah. Um, and <laughs> certainly... Agree. Certainly the Bay Area. Nothing good is happening there. And that is where my friend Joan, who is the co-host of Eating for Free, but who's also like a lady that you could follow on the internet if you'd like. You could listen to her podcast too. But you you could just like follow her on Instagram. It's not it's not up to me. Um We're both a part of the Eating for Free extended cinematic universe. So this is very important to all of us. She's trying to get out of the Bay Area and it's so expensive. I don't know if you've ever had to move uh, across the country and be broke, but it is so difficult and you end up paying for way more things um, if you don't like do it all at once. Uh, Also, Joe Biden is he's ruining this country. The cost it's the, of the, the U-Haul brand and inflation. Is Someone thirty five hundred dollars. Thirty five hundred dollars for a U-Haul before gas. So we're trying to trying to help her out so that she doesn't have to like sell her plasma or her organs on the black market or whatever. Um, yeah. because she can't afford to stay in the Bay Area, but it, she also can't afford to leave. Yeah. Give her a different five dollars than the one set that aside, you are giving. <laughs> set aside fifteen dollars next month. I know for... that they have fifteen dollars because what are they? What are they doing? They're probably buying Magic the Gathering cards <laughs> and like our dorks, absolutely. Like eight dollar like bobas. I um, think I made a mistake <laughs> in that uh, I I tapped into the Tumblr demographic the tumblr market but i didn't tap hard enough into the furry market i know furries got it they you are spending so much like hundreds of dollars on furry commissions and i know this is true 
You can you can you can spare a little money. You don't have furry fans with uh, for the radio show. I'm sure Not enough, do. evidently. <laughs> Here's the deal, folks. For every twenty five dollars you give to Jones GoFundMe, I'll personally draw you Judy Hopps doing whatever you want. Okay? Greg is oh my God. so close to announcing a fuck a fan contest. <laughs> it's I so close. I will do a fuck a fan contest <laughs> if we hit a thousand dollars a month on Patreon, everyone. <laughs> I will do a fuck a fan contest, but I will have to, my co-hosts will have to allow me the entire thousand dollars for at least a couple of months for that. <laughs> yeah, what what is your price, Greg? What, what me, dollar amount are we looking at? It depends. It depends. And this goes, you know what? We'll do a fuck a fan contest, but I get to pick which fan. No. <laughs> then you're just going to pick Jane. If you're above, it, yeah, I would pick Jane. All right, look. We can do a fuck a fan <laughs> contest, but don't put in money for it unless you're like a like a six or up, okay? Greg taking this <laughs> oh idea so seriously is <laughs> I will do a fuck a fan contest. My window's open. This is this is not legally binding. Uh this this, this seems illegal. <laughs> you know what would be good merch is a gorilla radio show calendar. Uh-huh. And each month is a sexy photo of one of you, and then for Ooh, maybe like, a like one of yeah, and maybe, and for maybe one of the months it's like sure. all three of you, you know, um, yeah. and then We're maybe like some of them <laughs> can have like a bonus character or something in it, like, but m- mostly the three of you, and <laughs> I think Ethan that that there. would, yeah, 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 like give Ethan what's a month that's like February, you yeah. know, shorter month, um, yeah. Or actually, give me Ethan, February because that's Ethan Black History Month. Yeah, I'd say Ethan, the whitest guy we know for <laughs> Black History Month. Um, but you know, like I, I think that that I think that could be good. Do you know? Do you have a photographer? Jaden can take pictures. We me. should get a cal. We should get a calendar going. We should get a calendar going. Hear that, folks? The more you send us money, the sluttier I get. If we send, <laughs> if we sell a hundred calendars. Consider the fuck a fan contest on. (laughs) (laughs) You Um, say folks with an X. No. Did uh, you notice that? No, folks. I've been. I've. They. Greg accused me of doing folks with an X. No, you say that's how you say folk. I do. No, I'm saying it with an accent. You're like folks. Folks. Oh, and uh, an la- a- absolutely last update. You will I not swear. gentrify me. <laughs> <laughs> I swear this is the last update, but um, we are probably going to, we may do some voicemails and questions on the bonus episodes now, because at least next month, we're probably going to be doing just two episodes of the Congo series, which um, Fellas, it's gonna is more serious and we won't have time for more than mails. fucking two episodes to do that expect serious content from us for the, yeah for like episode. at least three or four i'd say but yeah so probably no voicemails for a while but still feel free to send them in yeah, send them leave them i listen to all of them whether they make it onto the show or we'll not we'll do a whole episode of just voicemails and questions and make sure they're quality because like the we don't. All of them don't make it to the show because sometimes I click on them before we record, and you you sound like shit. You know how to use the phone. Oh my god! Speaking People clearly. send us um in our voicemail just like their mental illness unchecked. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's like what what happens with you guys, but some people will like. We need to well, enable Wi-Fi calling before you call us so that we can actually hear. For you. real, I can't fucking hear half of you. You call in and you're like uh, 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 gorilla question mark. <laughs> Uh, and then you make chimp sounds. The chimp sounds are great. Yeah, they are you great. You need to uh, ask me a fucking question. Yeah. Ask yeah, I'm looking question. at that. Care. Can you see this? This like wall of text. Oh my god. Oh my this goodness. This is like. Is that a, they have is, problems. Holy <laughs> shit. You guys, uh, it's like the vent hotline. <laughs> some, of you, <laughs> some of you need to sincerely seek therapy. Remember that, everyone. All right. Well, with that, I think. That's enough content for the day. I think that's yeah. enough for... Well, everybody, our, I hope you enjoyed episode 36. That's a lot of episodes. So There could yeah. be more, though, if you get five, gonna, $5. For $5, you'll get a grand total of like 50-something episodes. So maybe Yeah, that is true. We, we're, we have like 14 uh, Pay up, you piece episodes. of shit. <laughs> All right. Pay me. All right, see you next time. <laughs>